This narrative illustrates the boundless extent of cruelty. The story of this devil will leave you disturbed for the rest of your life, making it the most disturbing case to be discovered ever. What are the limits to cruelty? How do we bring closure to psychopathic killers such as him? One of the waitresses at the restaurant was the first to spot a young girl who seemed out of place. The other customers were in disbelief. What were the odds that a child, who had been abducted weeks earlier, would be sitting right in front of them in broad daylight? But as the police arrived, they quickly realized that the shocking case unfolding was far more horrifying than they had anticipated. What made it even worse was that the perpetrator was more depraved than anyone could have imagined. This was just the beginning of a series of heinous crimes that would rock not only the city of Coeur d'Alene, but also the entire country. On May 16, 2005, an otherwise typical rainy day in the Pacific Northwest took a dark turn when an urgent 911 call was made by a resident of Kiotani County, Idaho. The caller reported an unfamiliar white pickup truck parked on his property. Little did the caller know that this call would kickstart an investigation that would lead authorities into the darkest case they had ever encountered. As the 911 operator gathered more information, the caller peeked into the vehicle and noticed some unusual items on the front seat, including an axe and a small silver object. Later that day, the same man made another 911 call, the discovery of a house and some unidentified bodies. After further investigation, the victims of this gruesome discovery were identified as Brenda Grohn, 40, her boyfriend, Mark McKenzie, 37, and her son, Slade Grohn, 13, all found in their home near Lake Coeur d'Alene, just outside the city. Tragically, Brenda's other children, Dylan, 9, and Shasta, 8, were missing. Their fears were hauntingly palpable. As the rain subsided that morning, the daylight revealed the chilling and graphic nature of the crime scene inside the house. While there wasn't any blood in the upstairs loft area, detectives did uncover a single plastic zip tie on the floor, matching those used on the victims. The evidence inside the home told a terrifying story, but it became even more horrifying as authorities examined the bodies more closely. It became clear that Slade had initially been gagged with duct tape, which had either slipped or been pushed down around his neck. His bare feet had red stains, suggesting he had walked through blood during the attack. The horror escalated when Joseph showed Shasta a video of her brother, bound and assaulted, suspended by a wire noose from the cabin's crossbeam. How deadly is that for a sibling? Shasta's revelation shattered any remaining hope that Dylan was still alive. She disclosed that Joseph had reached inside a container, presumably for a beer, and fired a shotgun, fatally shooting young Dylan. Numerous unsettling videos were found on Joseph's personal social media page, but no one could have foreseen the emergence of a new series of horrifying revelations. This eerie document, apparently penned during his teenage incarceration, provided a detailed account of his childhood and significant life events, with disturbing undertones suggesting his deviant desires. Joseph's dark side was further exposed through 101 pages of journal entries he wrote during his imprisonment in the 1980s. During this period, he appeared to have developed an alter ego named Jazzy Jet and would share photos of himself online dressed in drag and lingerie, attracting male admirers. Joseph pleaded guilty to murder and kidnapping charges in court and received three consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. Joseph was also charged with the murder of 10-year-old Anthony Martinez from Beaumont, California, and on April 5, 2011, he received two life terms after entering a guilty plea. Notably, Joseph wore a bulletproof vest during his sentencing hearing. This measure is occasionally taken when a prisoner must be moved beyond the courthouse premises with concerns about potential gunfire. The harrowing ordeal ultimately concluded on March 28, 2021 with Joseph's passing in prison due to an incurable brain tumor.